this is Rosalind. Oh, Rosalind, thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, we it's spoke, very, we spoke very, about... Yes. <laughs> we spoke about a year ago. Yes, I remember. It was a very interesting conversation. Thank you. Uh, since then, we did uh, some progress. And I wanted just to to um, to update you and ask some questions about that. Very well. So Very one of the one of the ideas which we are now exploring. It's easy to. It, it, I don't know if it's um, as important as others, but it's easy to analyze using uh, genomic sequences. So we're doing computer analysis. So the the, the double helix. Um, discovered by you. We are looking for resonances of, uh, which transfer biological information. So we assume it is an antenna and um, there are uh, electrons would, uh, would uh, oscillate and resonate within this antenna and also protons would form clouds and also resonate and oscillate. Uh, so these are two major Oscillating fields like clouds, which as we see it. In your times, Poland was, um, Linus Poland was uh, discovering those clouds and uh, you were aware of that. So, so we didn't go far away from it yet. But the main idea is that maybe, I don't know, very simple that if something looks like a crystal, there should be a resonance within it. And in crystals, typically things are parallel like in simple crystals. So we're looking for parallel structures in double helix and say, if one structure is parallel and similar, uh, very similar to another structure, then they would most likely resonate. Yes. So, so, so we are predicting that uh, in, a, in, a, in a important parts of the genome, there would be parallel structures in the double helix, and they would be only parallel if that if double helix is well formed. So nobody was looking for that. It's not immediate sequence, not like uh, you go step by step, but you would have to jump from one loop to another loop to another loop to another loop because when you jump from a loop to a loop, there would be parallel structures in them. Yes. So but also, it's how you look at the helix. Uh huh. It's. Uh, uh, there is parallels in the helix as it turns, uh -huh. as it is a turning, you know what I'm talking about. It's, right. It, but it creates parallels as, if it was a, just a straight line, it would have parallels for sure. But right. as it is a, a, a spiral, as it is, then right. it has more power in that way to create uh, parallels and non-parallels. So right. it, is, it can actually, if you, depending on how you're looking at it and how it's moving, it, it can create the parallels that you're seeking. So, but the, the thing is about that, um, it is working in a, in a way that uh, you, just like you said, it would have to be jumping from one place to another to create these parallels, but it creates them quite naturally with uh -huh. the the use of the um, genomes. And mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to explain it in a way that it, it's, uh, you see, I can look at it and, and know it, but it's uh -huh. something, else to, no, something else completely to explain it. So, right. To, but but for me, it is that the uh, the double helix creates many parallels within itself, and the uh -huh. very fact that it is spiraled is is multifunctional, so that it can actually send out information in non-parallel situations as well. Because right. it sends out information in different ways to different parts of the body. Now, right. and different time periods are also uh, held within the, 
the columns. They are time released. And uh -huh. as they are brought, as those parallels are brought in and activated, the time released is part of, of all these things. Uh -huh. So you can ha actually have parallels where you do not see them originally. As time moves on, the spiral is, is m manipulated. Does that make sense to you? Right, 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 right. The manipulation of the spiral can, has, can fold and create squares, rectangles, and all kinds of parallel lines. Uh huh. So therefore, yeah. you have all kinds of uh, information that you cannot readily see just by looking at the 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 gene uh, the genomes or 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 the helix. Right, right. Mm -hmm. They Got they it. they have to interact for the information to be visual in in some way. Right, I understand. I understand. So the clouds that you were talking about, these uh -huh. clouds are very important in holding information that's necessary because uh, they are positioned to be released at certain times and with certain uh, veracity. So uh -huh. the clouds contain the information that is necessary to keep things balanced. Of course. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what else I can say right now. One moment, please. Let me think about that for one moment because I, I, I'm just picturing all the different ways that I can say this. Uh huh. Yes. Maybe, perhaps, if you ask a different question, I can yeah. have a different perspective. Yeah, I wanted to add a couple of ideas on top of that. The first idea that um, the double helix has a period of the turn 10 and a half uh, nucleotides, 10 and a half, yeah, 10 and yeah, half yeah. units. Oh, yes. So yeah. After the first period, there is no parallel, uh, the, the, the nucleotides are not parallel. Correct. Because there is a little shift, and it's very obvious there. Yes. Uh, it's a shift of half a unit, half a nucleotide. But after the second period, that shift disappears and they're parallel again. So um, it's 10 and a half plus 10 and a half, it's 21 units, 21 nucleotides. And then, so every 21 nucleotide, they are parallel to the previous, to the previous one. So yeah. it's, it goes every other turn. So the nucleotide, say A, would uh, be parallel to um, another A if it was placed 21 nucleotides next next in the sequence. Yes. Of course we know that some of the forms of DNA are have uh, not 10 and a half, but nine and a half and 11 and a half. So it's not necessarily 21, it could be 23 or 19. Yes. Uh -huh. so, so we expect we expect that periodicity in the genome that if there, I mean, A would be um, uh, resonating with A, so we expect that there would be more repeats of A every 21 nucleotides than expected by chance. Yes, that's true. That's true. That's true. And also, we think that A may be resonated with G because they all have, uh, they both have the same uh, structure with, um, which looks like uh, number eight. Yes. Two, two circles together. So, uh, so uh, may maybe A's and G's would, would, would resonate to each other. So we expect that A and G's would uh, be every 21, repeated every 21 nucleotides and so on. Yes, that's, a, that's very logical, yes. And, and the resonation between them is, is important because they give off, uh, as they do that resonation, it, it is a special... Uh, interval that they do this in and it's also a uh, time lapsed it's also a time period wow so in and therefore you have your resonations and they they have distinct meanings for uh, distinct areas depending on where 
they are overlapping. Uh huh. All right. And that's my next uh, comment that we expect it to, over, uh, to be uh, those resonances we expect it to be in the parts of the genome which are responsible for resonance. Of course, yes. And uh, uh, we the see that there are. Yes. yes. The genomes resonate the same almost always. But they are, but the thing is, there's locations are the important part of the genome residence, resonance. Right. So, so uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, there are protein coding sequences within the genome. And I think they're so busy coding for the proteins, they might be not be, in, be in, uh, not be involved in resonances as much, at least of that kind. So we expect that this would be non-protein coding sequences. Uh, yes. And and uh, non-coded sequences uh, for different. Otherwise, everyone would look the same. <laughs> so, so um, I mean, I'm not talking about everything being re uh, reason. Maybe only one of the. Uh, uh, maybe there would be like only one uh, stretch of nucleotides which will be like resonating and all, all others, how do you explain? Yes, so, I know. I understand yeah. what you're saying, that only one, that only some of the res uh, nucleotides would resonate at once, not all of them. Right, right. And others don't have to resonate. You I mean, if you can have like a backbone of resonation and all others would have, we have like on the, around, around would, be, would be variable. So it's not a big problem. There's many so, variables, yes. So even the protein sequences could have uh, those resonances embedded, I think. Oh, but, yes, absolutely, yes. But um, uh, so one of the factors is that uh, this would be non-coding. And another factor, I think, are uh, the important sequences, important resonators would be conserved in the evolution. So we would have the similar structures, non-coding structures in, um, say, in... Um, Mushrooms and uh, and humans. Oh yes. So we are looking for those uh, highly conserved structures which are non-coding, and uh, if they're conserved, they meaning that they have it means that they have the function, and most likely that it is possible that the function would be of resonation. Yes, the the DNA of a mushroom is very different in some ways because the DNA of a mushroom would be near the root area. You would find the the uh, that portion near the root and near the uh, areas of growth. So the human functions throughout the body, the DNA throughout the body is uh, very different than that in some ways. So because it has, it's so much more complex. But it's how do I say this? The, the resonance sequences uh, are so much more diverse and uh -huh. so much, what? Yes. Yes, they're so much more diverse and so much more frequent. Uh-huh. The resonance, humans are resonating in different places in the, in the helix constantly, 24 seven. They're, uh -huh constantly resonating in different places for different reasons. Uh -huh. And this is sending information throughout the body. Of course, that's where all the DNA is, is throughout the body. So therefore, it's a, a constant communication systems, but it's also a constant instructional uh, cycle. Right. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking which of the species would be, we have lots of species sequenced now, so we can look at different yes. species. So which of the species would have more resonance than others? And uh, mushrooms are, are attractive because I think they would be a great, great resonators. Oh, yes. They, they have huge, uh, huge networks and, may, you know, some, yes, some yeah. people are, argue that mushrooms are the main mind of the, of the plant. Well, that I never was in, I was never part of that, mm -hmm. never part of that understanding. 
but I do see them now as I've left there as a communication systems. And mm -hmm. I have really not studied them as much as I should, but I find them uh, quite um, interesting because they do have several different thought patterns. They mm -hmm. do have several different communication skills, but mm -hmm. it's limited. They do not, they, their communication skills are limited by about three or four messages. So the thing is about them, yes, they do have a huge communication system, but what they say is very similar. Uh, they only have a very um, limited amount of vocabulary when it comes to communication through the uh, DNA. Yeah, the idea is that uh, they're in charge of the plant life. They Tell, which, tell the forest which plant should grow and which plant should die. It looks like they're in charge. They're the mind of the forest. Well, that, the, reason, the way they do that is through a vibration and through a sequence, just like regular DNA. Uh, uh -huh. The sequencing of the, of the movement and vibration lets everybody know their... But like I said, their thought processes are limited. Uh, live, die, uh, uh, consume, do not consume. Different, very, very uh, simple instructions. I see. I see. So I, 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 still, I still prefer to be friends with them because I want them to tell my secrets to live. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but they are, but the, the thing is, still to do that, it is a complex system. Right. So the resonance within them it has to work exactly properly for the right information to be sent out, of course. So that in that, in that particular realm, even though the communications are limited, they are, it still takes a great deal of energy to perform these tasks mm -hmm. and a great deal of genome uh, activity right so i'm also thinking that uh we have animals which are uh collective and individualistic like the best example is chimps and orangutans yes and um, also for fish are some fish go in big schools and are very parallel to each other, very syn synchronized, and other fish are lone hunters. In general, I think it looks like uh, hunters are individual and uh, uh, vegetarians are, uh, are collective. I see. Well, in fish, it's interesting that we think that they have a uh, there's a psychic uh, connection between them, so they move exactly the same way consistently. They know exactly how they're going to move, and even when there's a surprise, they scatter in uh, different directions. They come back together in just about the same format and same formation that they had exactly before that. And wow. that their, their movements are exactly precise to one another. So, um, so I'm, I'm, we are thinking about comparing the, the, the genomes of the collective animals, like collective fish, to individualistic fish. All right. And chimpanzee and orangutan. Very well. The humans, I think, are in between. Uh, some of us are collective, some of us, you know, part of us is uh, very individualistic. So I'm not sure about the humans. It depends on how you were brought up, I think. That is true. Yeah, that is true as well. I think that if you are in certain uh, geographic regions where there is, you're in a city or, or something of that nature, you would, have, you would tend to be more communal in the sense that the karma there is all uh, pretty much attached. And if you're part of it, then you are part of that... Uh, community. And if you are in a 
a, a country setting or a isolation setting, shall we put it. If you're in an isolation setting, you have more independence on your thought processes, and then people are quite different thinkers there than they are in the cities. However, there are some exceptions to every rule. So I expect the collected species to have certain sequences unique to that species, which mm. allow, which allow, would allow them uh, to uh, synchronize. That would be true. That would mean that they have synchronized vibrations in the genome. Right. So this is what happens. They become close, their energies. You have seen the fact that some women's menstrual cycles uh, uh, become all the same once, when they work together. It is same with the genome vibrations and uh, resonations. They, they start to sync up with one another and they start to think more alike so that they can become more efficient together. So the body is one that tries to be efficient. And so therefore, it does try to be efficient in even the way that it syncs up with other human beings. I'm, I'm watching uh, uh, the, the thought process of Elon Musk. And uh, initially he was interested in um, artificial intelligence and very excited about it. And it looks like he learned about the dangers of use of it for military purposes. And yes. he was very much against it. And, uh, and then later, uh, very recently, he discovered that, uh, he, he realized that there is no way around, that it is unavoidable that it will be here. So the only way to control it is by merging with it. So he now propo prop uh, he develops the ways to uh, Neuralink, uh, the interface of humans and artificial yes. intelligence. So we'll be part of that progress. So we wouldn't okay. be. The thing is this. Any kind of artificial intelligence with no emotional control can be very dangerous. So he wants to, uh, uh, you see, emotions are the thing that make decisions better. You may not think so. Some people think that pure intellect is better than having emotions of all. However, with emotions, you make better decisions. So therefore, he saw that it was dangerous to have AI without emotions. And so therefore, his thought process is that they should incorporate that in all AI so that they can emotionally feel the situation as well as think it. Uh-huh. So... Um... He, I think he discovered, he came to that realization maybe a um, couple of years ago. I, I don't know the exact timing, but approximately. And uh, I just noticed that I came to that realization. I know exactly it was uh, around uh, June of that, of that year, maybe a little early, maybe, maybe spring of the previous year. So I was behind and I wasn't watching him or listening to anyone of, uh, on that topic, but it came to me as a knowledge, as an understanding by, by itself. So I'm thinking that maybe it was a resonance and that was that collective resonance through that collective sequence of humans. You picked up on someone else's vibration. <laughs> right, and uh, I'm pretty sure it is uh, the ALU sequence, A-L-U. It is the main, uh, main resonator. I believe it's a main, the main resonator in, uh, in, uh, which makes us human. Yes, I, that is true. Humans have the ALU and other species do not. I mean, the, 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 it's, it's unique to primates, but humans have uh, a few forms which are unique to humans. Yes, that okay. is correct. That is correct. Uh -huh. And they are, more, they are more developed in humans than they are in even the primates. Oh, that I didn't check. It would be interesting and pretty easy to, to map. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, humans have different, more unique alu as well. Yeah, I mean, there are like, uh, they are met by 
by the age of million years classified and we know which ones are older, which ones are younger. And um, the youngest are still a few million years old, but uh, maybe half a million years old. But uh, yeah, the younger ones are unique to humans. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Yes, that is true. It is, it is an interesting subject matter. The Alus are definitely what make humanity unique, unique and intelligent, as, as intelligent as they are. And that is why they always come back to talking about DNA in the brain, because the Alus have to do with that. So, thank you. Another project I'm working on is um, trying to find money for the research. And uh, I'm looking at different physical therapy devices. So, essentially, the devices that send, send waves to do something good to, to, the, to the body. Yes. And, and um, uh, you know, we, we, we learned a lot just from the experience and from different devices, from user reviews and from doctors and publications. So we know a lot about those waves. Do, are these, I didn't have these machines when I was there. So um, are these machines able to uh, record resonance as well as uh, apply resonance? Great question. Um, yes, there are machines that uh, record. There are machines that actually uh, talk back and forth and adjust the frequencies. If I had one of those machines, I think that I'd, my research would have gone much farther. Uh, we are in experimental stage, so some of these machines could be good and some of these machines could be very detrimental. I know a couple of my uh, colleagues uh, who were... Uh, harmed a lot by uh, misuse of the technology. Ah. So yes. I'm not sure. It's, it's very risky here. Yeah. Yeah, it's best to use something tried and true, of course. Yeah, so the tried and true ones are without the feedback. They just like send in very safe waves without interacting. And the interacting ones are still very experimental, I would say. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I was thinking, so my question was, um, maybe you can think about that. Um, these waves, it looks like most of them uh, work like Reiki. They, uh, maybe not, they're not, they may be not physically Reiki, they are not identical to Reiki, but they induce the effects similar to Reiki and other energy healing forms. So, but typically they, they are very pacifying and calming and healing. And I haven't yeah. found any, uh, and it's very good, but uh, people, for commercial purposes, for application purposes, people, people would love something that is other way around, which would be uh, healthy, but energizing, like coffee and other energizing drugs. Yes. And I couldn't find anything of that sort yet. It would be nice to have a machine which would bring you to higher dimensions, help you meditate, and they work like um, psilocybin, LSD, and other uh, yeah. psychiatric drugs, psychedelic drugs. Yep. But uh, I don't. I couldn't find any electromagnetic waves that would do that. No, I do not think there. Uh, but that is a very interesting idea. I like it very much. And some of the uh, vibrations of the DNA of the genome and everything like that. We have discovered that there are some rogue vibra vibrations, which means that they don't seem to go anywhere. These vibrations seem to just go off into no nothingness, and we're not sure where they that they are, are connected to anything. However, they would be they are there for a reason, and we do not know what it is. Uh huh. But. The thing is this, I'm sure that they resonate somewhere and that it does have some kind of a value because the body is so efficient that they would not be sending out these rogue vibrations without a reason. Right. When you say rogue, do you mean they're negative? They, 
rogue means that they're, it doesn't seem to that, that they don't have any particular direction or purpose. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, but yet we are trying to discover still. You see, I prefer to do things, I, do, I prefer not to have people tell me what the answer is. I like to find it. That way I remember it better. Yeah, yesterday I had um, a Reiki session with a wonderful, highly spiritual, highly, highly high vibrational healer. And at the moment she touched my head, uh, there was a big change in, in my mind um, vibration. So that just the process of touching, the moment of touching did a huge change. And a few, a few seconds after that, I basically moved from uh, this dimension to elsewhere. Of course, yes. And I wonder what's the physical mechanism for that? What's the physical nature of that touch? Well, it had um, spiritual overtones. So it was not just a touch. It was spiritually motivated. And therefore, it had different kind of energy attached to it. Remember how they have talked about all these different energies. The healing energies for the mind are different than they are for some of the other parts of the body. So therefore, uh, she was using all the most positive energies on you to bring about the most positive results. Right, but uh, so I assume there is lots of non-physical uh, vibration, non-physical, like non-material vibration. Oh, yes, absolutely, yes. But the, the fact that there was a touch means that the touch was essential. It means that there is a physical component to it. Yes, absolutely, yes. I mean, that gives me hope that we can actually make the device which would, uh, if not do it by itself, but at least you can amplify, like you put some, a glove on yourself and when you do Reiki, it would be like amplify well, a thousand times. How about that? The touch points are where the energy goes in the strongest. And so therefore, at the touch points, there will be changes. Uh, I would argue with that. Maybe, maybe that is not that critical to touch in a specific place. Maybe the fact of touching was more important than the location. Yes, of course. But still, you when it goes when there is a touch point, it goes in from that spot, and it it has to make a change to get to the area it's going to more efficiently. Uh, Yogananda described the technique where his um, guru was. Um, gently tapping on his chest and then Yogananda would go into front. Yes. And then Yogananda did to his students again to do to transmit sort of basically bring someone into trance. Yes. I just wonder what's the mechanism, what's the physical nature of that? Why do you need to touch? I mean, why just you cannot do it in your mind? Why do you need like a physical a physical contact? Perhaps humans want the physical contact and can relate to it better and bring about a better solution if they know that they have been touched. My hypothesis is that there is something about the nature of quantum mechanics. Like when I feel that you feel that I feel that you feel, then it collapses uncertainty. I see. That makes sense to a point, yes. Right. They are telling me I have to go. Yes, that's correct. Um, their clock is good. What? Uh, their clock is very good. On all, I mean, you guys on the other side, but your clock is very, very precise. Ah, I am not watching clocks. I am listening to inner voices. All right. Therefore, I will go because of that. Thank you very much for coming, and it was uh, very helpful. Thank and you. It's nice to connect. Please connect to me directly. I will do so. You are easy to connect to for me. Your thought processes work up it's very similar to my own. Thank you. Um, it's nice. Goodbye from now. Good night. Good night. Good night, goodbye. Yes. Goodbye.
Hello. Hey, Jim. Welcome back. Hi. Uh, 